What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So I've been on the journey designing high fashion boots, whatever high fashion means. But there is one thing that I was missing in my design, the puffer boot aesthetic. And so in this video, I'll be going over how I use blended cross simulation to add a sense of realism to my puffer boots. So with that being said, let's hop into the video. So these are the different variations and different simulations that I ran through and, you know, just problem solving multiple issues that I ran into. So this is actually the main part of the boot. And these is, you know, the accessories like the top piece and also the insulation of the boot. What actually came out pretty nice if you look right here. There you go. So just going through different iteration sides. So really trying to get that puffer aesthetic and just to add a little more realism, like I was saying in the intro, because the base model, yeah, it's OK. So, but once we add the cloth modifier and we put it all together and we get something that looks like this, it just, the cloth modifier just takes your render to a whole new level in the sense of realism. There you go, looks 10 times better. All right, so let me show you how I actually set this scene up. So the first thing you wanna do is click your model. We're just gonna single it out, just do slash on a number pad, and we're gonna go into edit mode. Just looking at the topology right now, let's just go ahead and make a couple more loop cuts just to give it a little bit more geometry to work with. Okay, perfect. Now, what you wanna do is just select the top piece. So Alt and left click will give you a loop selection. And you also wanna do the bottom piece. There you go, just get all of it. So the reason we started with the top and the bottom for the selection is because everything that we select will not be simulated. So the bottom and the top will not move at all, which is exactly what we want. We're gonna to go to the vertex group and we're gonna add and we're gonna assign this, right? So we're gonna go ahead and select our horizontal lines. All right, so same thing, Alt, left click, and then Shift, Alt, left click. So now we should have this selected also. Now, while we're here, we're also gonna do the vertical also. So go ahead and select a couple, there we go. So go ahead and select all of them. The back piece, just do another one right here. So once we got that all selected, go ahead and sign it also. So now if we click off and hit select, we should have everything selected. Now, sometimes you'll get issues like this. Now, what you wanna do is just click this and hit remove. All right, so just go ahead and double check that everything is selected and make sure we're not missing anything like right here. Hit assign. Before we actually apply the cloth modifier, there's one thing that we need to do. If you look at this panel right here, it's like a layer on top of each other. So we don't want to simulate the cloth right here on this back panel so that it doesn't intersect with the front. So that's an easy thing to do. All we're going to do is hit C, which is your circle select. Want to go to face mode and you want to select that back piece. There you go. Just select all of them. All right, make sure we didn't select any other piece like the front right here. So once you got that selected, just hit assign. Now let's look at everything combined together. We are ready to start the simulation. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have your modifier set. So subdivision one is okay. Solidify modifier, thickness 0 0.5, 0 0.46. And also we added another subdivision after the solidify modifier. So with all your modifier set, let's go ahead and add the cloth simulation. So when you click cloth, make sure that your timeline is at one. So there's a lot of presets that you can use. I either like to use silk or leather. For this one, we're gonna use the leather. So quality step 15, perfect. Okay, we wanna scroll down. Let's just collapse these. So, so our forecast, we'll do 50 and we'll come back to that. Now moving on to shape, our pin group, all we're gonna do is select our group. Then you wanna scroll down to shrinking factor. Now this, the shrinking factor is really what's gonna give it that puffer aesthetic. So to start off, let's just start off with a measly 0.038. You don't have to touch the collision and then just turn gravity all the way down. So once you hit simulate, you should get something that looks like this. Now to really get the details dialed in, Let's go ahead and go back to the cloth modifier. One thing we're gonna mess around with is, is the shrinking factor. Let's just bring it down a little bit more to 0 0.01. And also in our physical properties, we're also gonna scroll down and we're gonna click terminal springs and the pressure. Now for the pressure, we're just gonna add three and then let's re-simulate it again. There you go. Now we're getting a little bit more details. Now let's increase the pressure up to about five. There you go. So now you're getting something that looks a little bit more detailed than the previous one. One thing you can also mess with to get a better result is actually turning off the internal springs and you'll get something that results in something that looks like this. If this is more of the aesthetic that you're going for, that's perfect. So you can have something that's a little bit more exaggerated. Or if you want something that's just very subtle, you could just turn back the internal springs 
and get something that is very minimal. So let's talk about some of the issues that I ran into while I was simulating. So the first thing that I was running into was turning down the shrinking factor too low. So if we go and we simulate this, you'll get this, which doesn't look good at all all just beware if you turn your shrinking factor all the way down you will get something that looks like a mess so make sure not to go below 0.1 there you go so another issue that i was running into is that i was getting these little clumps and i was like man i do not understand what is going on right now all right so the issue that was going on i actually had self collision turned on so when you turn on your self collision, you'll get something that looks like this. And this is not the look that we're going for. If this is the look that you desire, try messing around with the self collision. So another setting we're gonna mess with is also the vertex mass. So you can see messing with the vertex mass, let's let's do a crazy number so you guys can see how it's actually affecting. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and bake this out. So make sure your start frame is 150 and just hit bake. All right, so once your simulation is done baking, go ahead and hit play. There you go, you'll get a smoother simulation. So don't worry about the mesh poking through because we're gonna fix that with the scoping after we're done with each piece. Now you wanna repeat this same process for the top padding and also tillation. So let's just go ahead and do that really quickly. Let's go ahead and isolate it. So we're gonna loop select this, loop select this one. All right, so it's the same process. What you wanna do is go to your vertex group, add a vertex, you can name this and so, so with the subdivision, let's go ahead and add two subdivisions onto it. And let's go to our cloth modifier once again. So cloth, now this time let's experiment with a different, let's say, let's do cotton, all right? So let's go ahead and make that 12, no eternal springs, the pressure, let's add five, our bake, one to 50, scroll down, our pen group, insole, and then let's bring our shrinking factor down and make sure our gravity is all the way down. So now, once we play this, whoa, okay, we forgot to assign that. So let's go back, there we go. So you can see it's very sharp. Now remember one of the issues that we ran into was that our shrinking factor was too low. So let's go ahead and increase our shrinking factor. So you can either increase the pressure value or the pressure scale. I like to mess around with the pressure scale and see what kind of result it gives me. So that's just a quick overview on how to get this insole. You can do a lot of fine tweaking with it. For example, we can actually change this from cotton back to silk, put this 12 and there we go. We get a better result. Now, same thing we did with our main. We're gonna go ahead and bake the claw simulation. Now, the same way we just did the main and also the insole, we're gonna do with these two pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this part. All right, so with all the pieces complete, all we need to do is just go to a part that we actually like. All right, so right there looks good. You wanna select all of them, go to the modifiers and hit apply all. So for further details, you can add another solidify modifier after your cloth and you should get a smoother result. So let's go ahead and do that for each one. Now, once we apply all of them, now what we wanna do is just fine tune this with the sculpting brush. So let's go ahead and start right here. So we're gonna go into scope mode. We're gonna hit G for grab. And all you wanna do is fix these pieces right here. So everything that is spilling over or intersecting, just push it back in. And also don't forget to turn your strength all the way up and just keep going until it's perfectly cleaned up. So let's just go ahead and push that in. And let's go ahead and work on this one also. Just bring this out just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and adjust this front piece too. Just bring it down. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and bring back our soul to see how everything looks together. There. We go. So let's just fix this up. All right. And then after you're done scoping everything, you just want to make sure that there's no pieces hanging out like this. Let's go put that back in. Bring that out. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you create a ultra puffer boot. Feel free to mess with the settings and go crazy until you find something that you like. And one final step, let's go ahead and place our puffer on the turntable that we made in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and click this video to see how we actually made and animate the turntables that we're going to use. Not only that, but I will be releasing this asset for free on my Patreon. So go check that out and leave in the comment section if you enjoyed this video, what other videos you would like me to create. One last thing, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. All right, you guys have a blessed year. Bang!